Hello, I'm Robert Costa, and this is the Washington Week Extra, where we pick up online where we left off on the broadcast. Joining me around the table, Nancy Cordes of CBS News, Josh Dawsey of The Washington Post, Mara Liason of NPR, and Vivian Salama of NBC News. Barbara Pierce Bush was the wife and mother of presidents and the mother of a governor and a distant relative, actually, of the 14th U.S. President Franklin Pierce. She was known for her strength, wit, and grace. Her children and grandchildren nicknamed her the Enforcer. My mother was on the front line and expressed herself frequently. Dad, of course, was available, but he was a busy guy, and uh, uh, he was on the road a lot in his businesses and obviously on the road a lot when he was campaigning. And so mother uh, was there to maintain order and discipline. She, she was the sergeant. Well, <laughs> mom, the nickname that she, one of many nicknames she has was the enforcer. So there were unwritten rules. And if you violated them, she would enforce the rules and do it in, in a way that um, was pretty effective. I don't remember my dad doing that. <laughs> Barbara Pierce and George H.W. Bush were married for 73 years, the longest marriage in presidential history. She was also known for her dedication to increasing literacy rates nationally and her power behind the scenes inside the White House. Mara, what a life. What a life. She was authentic before being authentic was the thing to be. And I didn't cover her directly. But our colleague, Karen Tumulty, we should give her a plug, is writing a book about Barbara Bush. And I just have one little Barbara she Bush. She's writing a book about Nancy Reagan. I'm sorry. She's writing a book about Nancy Reagan. Never mind. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> totally Karen wrong. appreciates you very much. I'm sure there will be some Barbara never Bush mind. No worries. So I totally messed up your webcast. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, can I read my Barbara Bush quote now, <laughs> please, please? Please, And do. make up for my transgression. Please Thank do. you. I love this one. Never lose sight of the fact that the most important yardstick of your success will be how you treat other people. She so could be tough. She was tough. Tough, Frank, tough, Frank, funny, yeah. candid, but she was gracious. Well, one of her quotes I saw on Twitter this week was that uh, John Sununu asked her why everyone disliked him immediately, and she said it was, it was because it saved time. <laughs> <laughs> Which, John, John Sununu, the former White House chief of staff, staff, governor of New Hampshire. Correct. Uh, when you think about the Bush family in American politics, it, it's really, they are, are a bookend of sorts politically sure. for another era in the GOP. Oh, yeah, sure. I, I mean, uh, you know, I, they are basically the extension of the Ronald Reagan era. They were there for that, and that is a very cherished time for the Republican Party, something that they constantly look back on as sort of their the, the prime era for them. And so, um, absolutely, they were a big part of that story. They carried it on. They became sort of, they, they had their own uh, dynasty when George W. Bush uh, became president as well. So. And another standard bearer of the Republican Party, Donald Trump, you know, frequently mocked Jeb Bush, sure. his low energy Jeb, has been deeply critical of George W. Bush, even at one point blaming him for the 9-11 attack saying the towers fell on his watch. Uh, you know, it's hard to imagine that either Bush, uh, Barbara Bush or George H.W. Bush voted for President Trump. Uh, you don't see a lot of love for that family. And so she dies in the middle of a totally different chapter for the Republican Party that does not have the Bush name or a lot of their values or approach attached at all to it. And do you think that's why he's not attending the funeral this weekend and why Melania is going to represent the family? I, I don't know. I don't think anyone fully knows, but I think uh, President Trump is not a cup of tea for any of the Bush family, and mm, I think yeah. Melania is a lot more inoffensive, mm. uh, likely, to the family to visit. And, uh, you know, it was pretty quick early on. They said Melania Trump will be right. going to the funeral. There was no mention of George W. Bush. Oh, well, I mean, you got to remember the Jeb, right. the Jeb Bush, George, uh, Donald Trump rivalry was really intense sure. and mm -hmm. sometimes pretty ugly. Plus, you had George W. Bush give that speech not long ago, mm -hmm. rejecting. He didn't talk about Donald Trump by name, but he rejected Trumpism pretty right. completely. And you have to wonder whether the enforcer herself had some thoughts yes. about it. Had that some she instructions, <laughs> instructions for her. While well, she was right, drinking right, that right. bourbon. I don't yeah. think Donald yeah. Trump was going to be yeah. a ball bearer. Yeah. 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 She, no. There was a, a story about her drinking a bourbon yeah. near the end, anonymously sourced, wasn't it, Josh? Yes. <laughs> and I, I said online that I hope the day before I die, someone anonymously sources I'm having bourbon. <laughs> she, she was old school. I mean, I, I covered her in 2016 when she was out on the campaign trail for Jeb, and she reminded me of uh, Mrs. Kennedy. You always heard those stories of Mrs. Kennedy, the JFK and RFK's mom being out on the campaign trail for them. Uh, just a, a different, from a different generation of political families, uh, we hope she rests in peace. 
Last week, U.S. Senator Tammy Duckworth of Illinois became the first sitting senator to give birth while in office. This week, she convinced the mostly male Senate to change the rules and allow babies to be brought onto the chamber floor. During votes on Thursday, her newborn daughter was welcomed. It was an emotional day for Duckworth. I just think it's amazing, and I want to thank all my colleagues for the unanimous consent vote that we can do this. Illinois Senator Tammy Duckworth is someone who is changing the whole scene of the Senate, Nancy, and just her being there as a veteran, a mother now in the U.S. Senate. You were there. I saw you in a lot of those clips uh, watching her this week. Right, and you know, there's nothing as unifying as a 10-day-old baby. You know, when 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 she came out onto the Senate floor, this collective aww came uh, from the gallery above and the senators uh, down on the floor. But what's so interesting about this situation is she really made her colleagues think about a predicament that no one in the Senate had ever considered before because it had never been a problem before, which was uh, that she was going to have a baby, she was going to go on maternity leave, but the Senate is very closely divided right now and her vote might be needed from time to time. She might have to rush in at short notice. She might have to rush in at the middle in the middle of the night. And what is she supposed to do with her baby if she can't bring the baby onto the Senate floor, which has been, of course, uh, prohibited. And so uh, this was kind of a no brainer for the women senators, but uh, some of the men, didn't necessarily take some convincing, but they were a little bit confused. They didn't about know what to do. Why <laughs> this would be necessary. Yeah, yeah. One said, well, couldn't she just vote from the cloakroom? Yeah. Um, and, and another wanted to know about the, the Senate dress code, because obviously the baby wore cap, which is also <laughs> prohibited. Um, uh, you know, th that kind of thing. But in the end, they did pass this resolution unanimously and just in the nick of time, because the very situation that she was describing came up the very next day. And the women senators that I spoke to said, you know, this is not so much about the convenience of one female yeah. senator. Yeah, yeah. This is about sending a message to employers across the country that there are very simple small things that you can yeah. do to make work uh, much easier for uh, working mothers and fathers yeah. and to enable them to be as effective as they want to be. Uh, and your business will benefit if you make some small changes. She was the first, but I bet she won't be and, the last. Right. Oh, yeah. back, oh, go ahead, sorry. I was just going to say, change doesn't always happen very quickly in Congress. Mm -hmm. And so this was definitely a refreshing good news story. And I happened to be on the Hill as well when this happened. And one of the senators came out and he kind of looked at me and he goes, how cool was that? You know, they were really, they yeah, were they really were excited about it. Yeah, they were really excited about it. Back to Karen Dumblety yeah, for a yeah. second. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> someone oh, someone, someone posted on Twitter that uh, earlier this week, they said, what if there were 10 babies on the floor? And Karen yeah. replied and said, it would be fewer than usual. Yeah. <laughs> Which I thought was yeah, a pretty yeah, good yeah. clip. That is, that pretty is good. amazing. That's a good clip, and I think we'll leave it there. because yeah, yeah. that's, that's 10 um, crying babies. Ten cry yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. we can go all night with these baby jokes. <laughs> we'll keep it there. That's it for this edition of the Washington Week Extra. While you're online, check out my Washington Week blog and what's next for Deputy Attorney Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, something we talked about on the show. I'm Robert Costa. See you next time.